Aloha guys. Welcome to another read aloud of There's a Boy in the Girl's Bathroom. Today your assignment is to do four thoughts on your virtual thinking track. So you're going to fill that in right in the responses box. And yeah, make sure you turn it in. That's all I think you need to know. So here we go. See ya. <laughs> Chapter 12. Just before the end of lunch period, someone knocked very lightly on the door to the counselor's office. Come in, said Carla. A girl timidly stepped inside. Are you Miss Davis? she asked. Yes, but I prefer to be called Carla. Do I have to tell you my name? asked the girl. No, not if you don't want to. Colleen Varigold, said the girl. <laughs> she sat down in one of the chairs around the, around the round table and said, I don't know who to invite to my birthday party. Carla remained standing. See, there's this boy I want to invite, said Colleen. Do I need to tell you his name? No. Jeff Fishkin, Carla smiled. But if I invite Jeff, then I'll have to invite another boy because I, can, I can't invite seven girls and only one boy, can I? I don't, except Jeff has only one friend and he's the most horrible, rotten boy in the whole school. I can't invite Bradley Chalkers to my birthday party. I just can't. She took a breath. <sighs> so what should I do? You want me to tell you whom to invite to your birthday party? Lori says you're good at solving problems. Lori solves her own problems. I just help her think for herself. But I don't know what to think, Colleen exclaimed. I can't invite seven girls and only one boy, and I can't invite Bradley. When's your birthday? November 13th. Then you still have plenty of time, said Carla. Let me give you a form for your parents to sign. Right now, I'm not even allowed to talk to you without your parents' permission. That's dumb. No, it's not, said Carla. Some parents don't want strangers giving advice to their children. But my parents won't care, said Colleen. They said I can invite anybody I want to my birthday party. That's not the point, said Carla. She handed her the form. Colleen reluctantly took it. Can you just whisper it to me, she asked. <laughs> Carla shook her head. Melinda and Lori were waiting for Colleen when she came out. Who are you going to invite, asked Melinda. Not Bradley, said Lori. Please not Bradley. I don't know yet, so said Colleen. She won't tell me until my parents sign this form. Chapter 13. Bradley dragged his feet as he walked to Carla's office. She was waiting in the hall for him. It's a pleasure to see you today, she said. I appreciate your coming to see me. She held out her hand. He stepped past her and sat down at the round table. She sat across from him. The reason the president doesn't wear a hat is because the doorways are too low, he said. He used to wear one, but every time he walked through a door, he'd hit his hat and it would fall on the floor. That makes sense, Carla agreed. Thank you for sharing that with me. But, she whispered, I thought you weren't allowed to tell me such top secret information. The president says he trusts you, said Bradley. Thank you, Bradley, said Carla. I'm glad you trust me. He looked at her as if he thought she were deaf. He hadn't said he trusted her. He had said the president trusted her, but he decided to just let it go. She was wearing a yellow shirt with large green triangular buttons all the way down the front. On one side of the buttons was a big white exclamation point. On the other side, there was a big white question mark. Jeff trusts you too, he said. I understand you two have become friends, said Carla. We're best friends. That's wonderful, said Carla. Today, after school, we're going to do our homework together. At his house, I'm going to help him with this, with the stuff he doesn't understand. Oh, that's very nice of you, said Carla. I'm sure Jeff appreciates having you as a friend. I'm his only friend, said Bradley. But even if he had other friends... He won't have any other friends, Bradley interrupted. You don't know you don't know that. Yes, I do. I'm his only friend. But suppose he makes new friends. I don't want him to. But if he made new friends, then his new friends could become your friends too. He won't, said Bradley, shaking his head. Just because you and he are friends, that doesn't mean he can't have other friends too, said Carla. Yes, it does. Why? Because, he said proudly, so long as Jeff is friends with me, nobody else will like him. Chapter 14, Homework. After school, Bradley Chalkers was going to go to Jeff Fishkin's house and they were going to do their homework together. 
Bradley couldn't believe it. Homework. It was all he thought about as he sat at his desk, last seat, last row, and waited for school to end. Maybe it won't be too horrible, he reasoned. After all, Jeff always does his homework. He must like it. The more he thought about it, the more he liked the idea. Homework. Work you do at home. Except he wouldn't do it at his home. He would do it at Jeff's home. And that was even better. It would be his first time over at Jeff's house. And after he did his homework, Mrs. Ebel might give him a gold star. Instead of scribbling, he drew little stars, one after another, until the bell rang. But first, they had to beat up those girls. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that, guys. You remember? They're going to beat up the girls. <laughs> Come on, let's go, he said, hopping out of his seat. Just a sec, said Jeff. He got a book from his desk. Oh, do I need one of those? Bradley asked. He hadn't realized that in order to do his homework, he would need to bring his book home. That's okay. We can share mine. They walked outside. There was a light drizzle. They're in Mrs. Sharp's class, said Bradley. We can wait here until they come out, then sneak up behind them. Who? Those girls. We have to beat them up so they won't say hello to you. We should probably get started on our homework right away, said Jeff. It won't take long, Bradley assured him. You just have to hit them once, then they cry and run away. But it's raining, said Jeff. It was barely misting. Good, we can push them in the mud and get their clothes dirty. Girls hate it when their clothes get dirty. Oh, so sad. They stood about ten yards away from Mrs. Sharp's door and waited. Several kids came out, but they didn't see Colleen, Lori, or Melinda. Maybe, they, maybe they've already gone home, Jeff said, hopefully. No, girls always take a long time to leave class, Bradley explained. First, they have to put their papers neatly in their notebooks. Then they have to mark their places in their books and put all their pencils in their pencil holder. Then they put everything away neatly in their desks. He said it as though it was the most disgusting thing anyone could do. Shh, here they come. Melinda, followed by Colleen and Lori, came out of Mrs. Sharp's room. Bradley put his finger to his lips. Then he and Jeff walked after them, keeping their distance. They followed the girls around the side of the building and along the sidewalk away from the school. Let's just go home, said Jeff. The homework might take a long time. Girls kick, warned Bradley. They don't know how to punch, so they try to kick you. He quickened his pace until he was just a few steps behind the girls. Jeff lagged a little behind. Lori was the first to turn around. Ugh, Bradley Chackers, she said, making a face. Lori loudmouth snapped Bradley, the ugliest girl in school. Melinda and Colleen stopped walking and turned around too. Grow up, Bradley, said Melinda. Make me, he replied. Hello, Jeff, Colleen said very quietly. Hello, said Jeff. Quit saying hello to him, said Bradley. It's a free country, said Lori. We can say hello. Not to us, said Bradley. We didn't say hello to you, said Lori. Just him. Hello, Jeff. Hello, said Jeff. Lori laughed. Why don't you just leave us alone, Bradley, said Melinda. No, you leave us alone first, Bradley said, and he pushed Melinda. <gasps> oh, no. She pushed him back. He pushed her again. She shoved him off the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. He slipped on the wet grass and fell to the ground. Lori laughed hysterically. Bradley scrambled angrily to his feet. You got my clothes dirty. Bradley wet his pants, teased Lori, hiding behind Melinda. Shut up, he yelled. You started it, said Melinda. I'll punch you in the face, said Bradley. He shook his fist at her. Melinda raised her fists in the air. He charged toward her, then kicked her in the leg. She slugged him in the face with all her might. Bradley stumbled backward and almost fell again, but caught his balance. He glared at Melinda as his eyes swelled with tears. No fair, four against one, he shouted, then ran home crying. Did you guys notice that Bradley kicked the girl and the girl punched him? And that's opposite of what he said would happen, huh? And he was the one that fell in the mud and got his clothes dirty. That's interesting. All right, chapter 15. By the way, never fight. And don't fight girls, especially, or boys. But just no fighting, okay? <laughs> okay, chapter 15. 
My poor baby, said Bradley's mother as she wrapped her massive arms around him. He had stopped crying shortly after he ran away from Melinda, but started again when he saw his mother. They beat me up and threw me in the mud, he sobbed. His mother wiped his face with a tissue. She kept rolled up in her shirt sleeve. Come on, she said, and led him by the hand down the hall to the bathroom. You'll take a nice warm bath, put on clean clothes, and feel good as new. Claudia was in the bathroom combing her hair. What happened to him? Some boys picked on him after school. There were four of them, said Bradley, and they ripped up my homework, too. You've been crying, Claudia accused. That's the rain, said Bradley. Claudia started to say something, but her mother told her to leave the bathroom. She laid out clean clothes on the bathroom counter, then started the water. After his bath, Bradley went into his bedroom. He was just in the nick of time. Ronnie the rabbit was romping across the bed, singing doo-dee-doo-dee-doo, -doo, when suddenly she was lost. Where am I? she asked. Suddenly, three bad guys were chasing her. They were the two of spades, the nine of hearts, and the king of diamonds. The king of diamonds was the leader of the bad guys. After her, he yelled. Help, called Ronnie. She ran to the edge of the bed. The cliff! She was trapped. The floor was a thousand feet below. The bad guys moved in for the kill. Let me go, she shouted, then fell off the bed onto the floor. But that was an accident. Bradley picked her up and put her back on the edge of the bed. It never happened. There was time out. What are you going to do to me? asked Ronnie, trembling on the edge of the cliff. We are going to kill you, said the King of Diamonds. Oh, no, you don't, said a voice from behind. It was Bartholomew. Get him, boys, ordered the King of Diamonds. The cards attacked. Bartholomew punched the two of spades in the stomach, then flipped him over his head and over the cliff. Ah, the two of spades yelled as he fell a thousand feet to his death. Next, Bartholomew beat up the nine of hearts. Go join your friend, he said as he threw him over the cliff too. Ah, cried the nine. Now only the king of diamonds was left. He came at Bartholomew, swinging an axe. I'll chop off your head, he sneered. Bartholomew tuck, ducked, then kicked the axe out of the king's hand and punched his face in. He threw the king over the cliff, too. Ronnie ran to Bartholomew. You saved my life, she said. I know, said Bartholomew. They kissed. Ew, gross. Claudia walked into the room. Mom's making cookies because you got beat up, she said. Oh, are you going to have a black eye? I didn't get beat up, Bradley declared. I beat them up. I gave one kid two black eyes and another boy three. You can't give somebody three black eyes, said Claudia. Shut up, said Bradley, or I'll give you four black eyes. Claudia shrugged and left his room. Bradley got up from his bed and went into the kitchen where his mother was making chocolate chip cookies. She let him lick the spoon. I want to know the names of the boys who did this to you, she said. I'm going to call your school principal. Bradley thought for a moment. I don't know all their names, he said. Don't be afraid to tell me, said his mother. They won't hurt you anymore. Bradley thought a moment. Jeff Fishkin, he declared. He was the leader of the gang. I'll call the school first thing in the morning, said his mother. Good, said Bradley. I hope he gets in trouble. I hate him. Hmm. So something to think about when you're writing your responses today or your thoughts, make sure that you write something about why did he say that it was Jeff that beat him up or that he was the leader of the gang of the girls because that confuses me a little bit. All right, guys, we're going to stop there and yeah, make sure you turn in your assignment and I'll see you later.